State Board of Nursing Clinical Judgment Measurement Model, also known as NCJMM, and the link to the next generation NCLEX, also known as NGN. So the plan today is for the objectives is to identify the layers of the National Council uh, NCJMM, also describe the link between the NCJMM and the nursing process. We want to identify the differences between cl critical thinking, uh, critical reasoning, and cl clinical judgment and describe the expectations of the NGN test. Last, we're gonna, we're gonna examine the NGN case studies and scoring methods to make sure that um, you understand what began in April of 2023. So what is NCJMM? Well, the National Council of State Board of Nursing, the organization that runs all boards of nursing, decided in 2013 to develop a framework for NCLEX. They wanted to make sure that they aligned with real world nursing, what is going on at the bedside. They also wanted to measure clinical judgment and decision making for entry level nursing. You might ask why? Well, why we found through some research that 50% of novice nurses were involved in nursing areas. 65% of those errors involved poor clinical decision. And 80% of the employees were not satisfied with not, uh, novice nurse clinical decision. Now that's not saying that they're not satisfied with the new nurse. What they say is the decisions coming out of the new nurse, they were so focused on the task and the skills and not the making the decision. So the National Council of State Board of Nursing decided to make some changes. And that led to the clinical judgment measurement model that they developed. We want to make sure that all students are prepared for a safe clinical practice. So let's hear what the National Council of State Board of Nursing has said about, um, about this. Research shows 65% of nursing errors result from poor clinical decision making, and 50% of novice nurses are involved in those errors of nursing care. Are entry level nurses making the right decisions? At NCSBN, we are dedicated to assessing and adapting to the rapidly evolving healthcare environment. We know that the next generation of nurses will need to make more complex decisions about client care. To meet today's client needs, Improved measurement of the nurse's clinical judgment is critical. That's why we're developing next generation NCLEX. Clinical judgment is a combination of critical thinking and decision making. To evaluate clinical judgment, the next generation NCLEX examination questions will focus on interactions between nurse and client, the client's needs, and expected outcomes. Experts in the latest testing techniques and technology worked with expert nurses to provide cutting-edge solutions on how to best create a test around this model. The Clinical Judgment Measurement Model is a framework designed for testing. It complements the nursing process and other evidence-based nursing theories or practice. To best explain the next generation NCLEX exam, we simply have to look at examples of these new types of questions. Once you see them, it's very clear how they reflect real-world nursing care. Each uses realistic scenarios or case studies like you would see in a typical nurse-client interaction and focuses on the types of decisions nurses will have to make in a clinical setting. Extended Multiple Response Extended multiple response items allow you to select one or more answer options at a time. This item type is similar to the current NCLEX multiple response items, but with more options. Extended Drag and Drop Extended drag and drop items allow you to move or place response options into answer spaces. This item type is like the current NCLEX ordered response items, but not all of the response options may be required to answer the item. In some items, there may be more response options than answer spaces. Close or drop down. In close or drop down questions, you can select one answer option from a drop down list of words or phrases and can be found within tables or charts. Enhanced Hotspot Enhanced Hotspot items allow you to select the answer by highlighting predefined words or phrases. These types of items allow an individual to read a portion of a client medical record and then select the words or phrases that answer the item. Matrix Grid 
Matrix grid items allow you to select one or more answer options for each row and or column. This type of item can be useful in measuring multiple aspects of the clinical scenario with a single item. These new item types provide the nursing student with a fidelity-based exam, reflecting the complexities of clients in a variety of healthcare settings. As you can see, the next generation NCLEX is an exciting enhancement to an already rigorous exam. Using the latest testing techniques to maintain the high level of reliability and accuracy of the NCLEX while meeting the changing needs of nursing regulation, public safety, and healthcare. It's all about protecting the public and achieving the best outcomes for clients, nurses, and institutions. So what is your current knowledge of the National Council State Board of Nursing clinical judgment measurement model? If you can put in the uh, question area, if you're one, I do not know where the uh, anything about the model, to five, I am very familiar with the clinical judgment measurement model, or anywhere in between. It's nice to have a little guide to see where you're at, to make sure that you uh, at, we're preparing you and making sure you understand a lot about the clinical judgment measurement model. It is a new model, so I don't expect everybody to have a lot of fives in there because it, uh, we just started the NGN and the clinical judgment measurement model was released over the last couple of years and we're working on integrating within our curriculum. So please, in the question area, please respond. Let us know how familiar you are with that. Now let's talk about critical thinking. What is critical thinking? So critical thinking is the process of reflective and reasonable thinking about nursing problems without a single solution and is focused on deciding what to believe and do. So you need to know how to provide that safe care. We need to help you think consciously about what you are doing. Sometimes faculty will ask you questions with a question or answer your questions with a question. And that's to promote that critical thinking, to elicit more response from you, to think through processes, because that's what you need to do as a nurse. You need to also allow time for reflection, debriefing everything after a course, debrief. And that is part of your critical thinking, thinking through a lot of those processes. We are teaching students how to think, which is essential for your success as a nurse. You must have time to consciously reflect and debrief, and all of that helps you to critically think. Clinical reasoning is the process of thinking through problems to make decisions. So we need to make sure that you are reasoning, looking at the process of thinking to help solve the problems that you're going to encounter in nursing. And clinical judgment, the National Council State Board of Nursing in 2019 defined, cl defined clinical judgment as the observed outcome to, of critical thinking and decision making. It's an iterative process. What that means, and we'll show you with some of the uh, tables we'll be providing, is you have sometimes you'll have to go back to the beginning because it's an iterative process. If you evaluate and something's working, you don't have to go back, but not everything might be working. So you have to go back to the beginning and reassess. And we'll go through that process in a little bit. Uh, it, I, um, the iterative process uses nursing knowledge to observe and assess uh, presenting situations, identify a prioritized uh, client concern, and generates the best possible evidence-based solutions in order to deliver safe client care. We are working to support students to focus on clinical judgment to be safe in nursing practice. So when you think about the process of critical thinking and critical reasoning, that's all part of the clinical decisions you're making. The process is critical thinking and clinical reasoning. The outcomes is clinical decisions that help develop your clinical decisions, your ability to make those decisions. We want you to act, feel, and be a nurse. And we wanna make sure that you can focus on um, all of the processes that will help you become that nurse that knows how to uh, deal with situations that come about and make sure that you feel comfortable with how the decisions that you're making. The ability of the nurse to understand and act is, is essential for care. You can't just memorize as it will not support the knowledge for clinical practice. Most under, uh, you must understand and apply the content to be successful. Critical uh, Clinical reasoning happens at the bedside it helps you think, act, and feel like a nurse. You need to think on your feet and reason to make uh, correct clinical judgment. 
Nurses need to be detectives. You need to look for everything and anything that's not in the, not in the norm. You must understand pathophys to make sure nursing decisions support the clinical judgment that you're making. Let's see what the National Council uh, State Board of Nursing says about clinical reason or clinical judgment. Clinical judgment. Clinical judgment is actually a fundamental component of nursing. What nurses do, who they are, documentation, the interaction between the client and the nurse, the interaction between the nurse and the physician. It is fundamentally the underpinning of all things that nurses do. We were in fact measuring clinical judgment. The idea was, could we make it better? What we tried to do was build a model in its simplicity. Oops. See that no matter how you make your decisions, we could actually measure the outcomes of those decisions and the process. So if I am a nurse taking care of a patient, I need to focus my decision making in that moment, taking that from the bedside and making new item types. The item types and the tests look like real life. Focus on that education because it will prepare you to pass the test. It is merely built to validate the knowledge, skills, and abilities you gained from your education so that you are ready to practice on the first day. So when you think about how we can help you develop that critical thinking, um, it, so the development of critical thinking in the classroom might include concept mapping. So some of your courses might have concept mapping case studies, reflective journaling, communication, using the nursing process, having open-ended question, role modeling and gaming. So some of these things that the faculty will use in the courses are purposely there to help develop that clinical judgment and make sure that we're prepared for the decisions you need to make in the, in the healthcare setting. So when you think about case studies, you might have group work in class. You might have your own little case studies that you have to work on before class. And that helps to develop and understand the items that you're gonna be looking at to prepare for that class for that week. We need to apply that nursing process. The clinical judgment measurement model doesn't replace the nursing process. It is used in conjunction with. So we'll go through that and I'll show you where that's all aligned shortly. So those open-ended questions that we ask, we wanted you to think about your thinking and doing that out loud many times in the clinical setting as well will really help you develop and, and think what questions you should be asking. Your faculty is, is a role model, plus your clinical faculty or the instructions or the, the nurses on the unit, they're your role model. You might have gaming, cahoot, escape room, and that's all meant to help work through some of these processes that you're learning. The communication by asking appropriate questions help you, that guided journaling that, that will give you some prompts, and that's all to help you reflect and develop your critical, your clinical judgment. In lab, you might have some concept maps, just like we do in the lecture courses. There's a nursing process in there. The lab actually has electronic health records that really help put that piece together to help you think about that nurse, about that patient, about what you're gonna be doing. They also will might ask you to do a quick assessment, a 60, 60 second assessment. When you're in lab, you can look at the patient in that 60 seconds or that room and see what's going on, what might be missing, what more questions you have to ask. You, you might be, again, there might, the faculty might ask you those open-ended questions or ask a question, answer a question with a question, more to elicit that critical thinking. 
And that role modeling, when you're seeing others do that and practice their communication, their pre-brief and their debrief, all those processes help develop the critical thinking. Clinical reasoning in the classroom, that could be with you or teaching to peers that helps you reason out the process. They might ask you to lead discussions to make sure that you, once you teach people, you learn then you start reasoning about the processes. You might learn reflections or have debates or you have case studies in those classes, uh, the, the clinical as well, because that's all meant to look at different sides and to look at different things, looking at leadership or ethics, which is huge in a clinical setting is understanding the ethics. There's understanding ethics is important because you need to look at both sides of issues and what is the best decision for your client, not what you feel. The other thing we really want to work on is re reducing a lot of passive learning in that classroom because that's not effective for you. That ha doesn't help you to think, act, and feel like a nurse. We want that work, we want you to work on that and be engaged in those classes. So clinical reasoning in the lab, sim clinical, you might have Socratic clinical questions. Those questions, what would you do now? What would you do if you've given a medication, but you have to know the blood pressure? What if the blood pressure is low? So faculty and preceptors might be asking a lot of these questions because we're trying to figure out what's going on with the patient and find out and identify what you should do next. That reflective thinking. Thinking and reflecting on thinking is so important in understanding the processes. You might do um, role modeling or watch clinical uh, clinicians or doctors and how they interact. And that's that role modeling that helps you understand the way that you should uh, act in the healthcare setting and work with others in the healthcare setting. Electronic uh, health records, you'll be doing that in lab. You'll have electronic health records and simulation and clinical. You might also do a medication administration record, MAR, also known as MAR, review and reconciliation to practice that, understand why some of these things are right and wrong. So it's really important to understand that clinical reasoning and the things that we're doing in our classes are really meant to help develop that clinical reasoning as well. So clinical judgment in the classroom, that active learning is that essential to help you develop as a nurse. You might have the faculty ask you to think about something, then pair, pair up to with another colleague and then share with others. Those case studies to solve those problems. The scrambled classroom is just in time learning or small chunks of learning that happens before class. And then going over the content within the class to really understand really is meant to help you develop your clinical judgment. Asking questions, what are the priority? What would you do first? What is the immediate action that you would do? There's also data exercises. Any You might look at certain lab values or look at things over time, any trends that are happening within the patients. And of course, unfolding case study, uh, studies using the clinical judgment measurement model. And we'll talk about the clinical judgment model in more detail shortly, but I wanted to give you an idea of how these things are used within the um, healthcare setting or within our classes. So clinical judgment for lab simulation and clinical, again, asking questions, top priorities with rationale, what would you do first and why, client care activities, including delegation and supervision, lab values to identify trends, simulation, whether it's virtual or on campus, is meant to prepare you for the, for the clinical setting so you know how to ask questions, you know how to follow up on questions, you're looking up meds, you're, looking, you're identifying what's, what is wrong with this order. All of this is done in a virtual simulation setting so it's safe. We want you to make the mistake in a virtual or campus-based simulation. We don't want that that thing, the errors to happen in the clinical setting. So we work on work with you on prepping in the virtual and on campus on campus-based simulation. You also can compare patients with the same diagnosis because no two patients are the same. They might have additional diagnosis or additional items, things that are uh, medical diagnosis that are going on. So it might impact that patient. So looking at different. Uh, patients with the same diagnosis is really important to help support and develop your clinical judgment. So simulation using the NCJMM. Debriefing is big and should include the discussion of cues, what cues are important, what hypothesis is important, what solutions, what action should I do? Learn the clinical judgment before and then during debrief, look at what's going on within that patient. So here is the clinical judgment measurement model. This is really what you came here to look at today. 
So the clinical judgment measurement model has four layers, and you can see that the nursing process is down at the bottom, and it aligns with layer three, which is really the nursing, the real measurement model, the real details on caring for patients, and what you're going to see in on NCLEX in the NGN, and really it helps us really understand what we're going, uh, what we're going to do, and how we're taking care of patients. On the top in layer zero, it talks about client's need and clinical decision. Layer one is actually the clinical judgment, what you're making, what you're deciding. Layer two is the, the basic uh, foundations. You know, you're going to form hypothesis. You're going to refine the hypothesis, and then you're going to evaluate the care. Layer three talks about recognizing cues, analyzing cues, prioritize hypothesis, generating solutions, taking those actions, and evaluating outcomes. We'll talk about layer four, some of the environmental details uh, a little bit uh, in more detail later. And then we have the nursing, and I'll talk about all elements as well, but the nursing process, you can see assessment aligns with recognized cue, analysis aligns with analyzed cues and prioritize hypothesis, planning aligns with the generate solution, taking action, implementation, and evaluation is evaluating outcomes. So you can see that clinical judgment and the nursing process are aligned and they use to prepare you for moments of crisis. So you are prepared to grasp and understand how to care for those, the clients when there is no time to find an answer. So you can see here um, the layer two and layer three to have a better understanding of the action model, because this is really an action model, what action you're gonna be taking going to be taking. It's important to know how the NG, NCGMM relates to the nursing profession. Layer three and four delineate the cognitive processes on how nurses making decisions for layer two. So based on the client's response to layer two, either it's satisfactory or unsatisfactory. If it's satisfactory, good, we're, the patient is improving. If it's not, we're going to go back and form a hypothesis, recognize cues, analyze cues, then we're going to refine, prioritize hypothesis, generate solutions, and then we're going to take actions and evaluate outcomes. So the move, nurse can move through the entire cognitive process, layer three or four, again, until we see that improvement. The clinical judgment um, impacts the decisions that we're needing to care for that patient. Layer three of the clinical judgment measurement model is essential when considering testing and education of, of entry-level nurses and how they develop. These six steps of layer three, they're, like I said, they're the repeti repetitive process that improves over time. And it, as you go as a nurse, these processes and everything become more systematic and deliberate. As you gain experience, the steps occur more promptly and they become second nature. So as you're moving through and as you're a nurse in the healthcare setting, it does get better and you will get that experience and really feel comfortable with the decisions that you make. The additional of the individual factors in layer four creates that realistic client situation. So you might have environmental factors or individual factors that we'll get into shortly. So as you see, layer four factor that could be environment, it could be client observation, the consequences and, um, and risks. What risk is this patient? The time pressure, how fast do I need to take care of this, this item? Tax complexity, is a, a, a patient with minimal tax complexity versus somebody who needs total care, uh, NG insertion, all these additional um, IVs and in things that take a lot more complexity, a lot more learning, and not a lot more knowledge base. Is it the environment? Are you caring for a patient in the hospital setting where they're near everything that you need or need? Or are you in a in a clinic where you don't have access to everything that you need? So looking at that and any available resources, do you have the appropriate medical record or cultural consideration? Does this person speak English? Does this person um, have different a, a different culture that they really need a, a to be cared for differently, or they have different expectations. And those individual factors is your knowledge base, the student's knowledge base, the nurse's knowledge base. What skill do you have? What specialty? If you're an OB nurse, hard to go into the med surge floor if you've been in the um, OB area for a while. So sometimes you're coming back, if you're going to a different unit, you begin as a novice in that area. So candidate characteristics, what is the experience you've had prior to coming? 
to the program or prior to um, starting as a nurse and your level of experience. All that are factors that impact patient care. Now let's take a look at recognizing cues. The big thing with recognizing cues, this is the beginning of stages when you walk into a patient room or you're provided with a patient scenario, what information on that in that scenario is relevant, irrelevant. When you're looking at patient uh, nurses notes or doctor's notes, you're gonna be seeing information in there that is tied to the current diagnosis or something that's in their medical history. You also wanna look at their vital signs and what is of immediate concern with this patient. You don't wanna connect the cues with a hypothesis just yet. You're just recognizing and gathering those cues. You wanna look at, is there uh, labs? Is there other tests? What are, their, what are their prescriptions? What are the signs and sy uh, symptoms? You wanna differentiate between what is relevant and irrelevant data, and also recognize what is most important or urgent. Analyze cues is the next, um, next layer of the clinical judgment measurement model. So this one has you organizing and linking the cues to the client's presentation. What client conditions are consistent with the cues? Almost like that detective. You're trying to figure out how that ties. Are the cues that support or contraindicate a particular condition? Why is this a cue or subset of cues of concern? What other information would help establish the significance of the cue or set of cues? Do I need more lab results? Do I, am I waiting some, for some lab results to make those decisions and analyze these cues? Do I, do I need to recommend to the doctor or let the doctor know this is happening that um, more lab results may be needed? You wanna cluster that data. You wanna recognize patterns and consistencies, link the cues to client situations and recognize what is concerning and why. Determine what other information is needed so you can consider possible causes. Prioritizing hypothesis is evaluating ranking the, what's going on with the patient according to priority. Is this urgent? Is it likely? Are the patient at risk for or the client at risk for this? What is the difficulty level? What is the time? What explanations are most or least likely? What are the possible explanations are the most serious? So when you think about that, you want to narrow those possibilities, determine the most urgent, and provide a rationale to support your conclusion and determine the order of priorities. What are you going to do first? What, is, what, is, what are we um, focusing on? Generate solutions is identifying expected outcomes and using hypothesis to, to define a set of interventions for unexpected outcomes. What are the desirable outcomes? We want to make sure we have multiple appropriate interventions and identify the in interventions to, uh, that you want to avoid. You wouldn't give a blood pressure med to a patient whose blood pressure is low, just like you wouldn't give a heart, a heart pill or a medication to a patient who, whose pulse is really low. You need to have those that ability to generate the solutions to determine what interventions you need to do to really care for that patient. Sometimes you have to gather more information to be able to generate your solutions. And take actions is like uh, implementing the solutions or what are you gonna do in nursing? What intervention or combination of interventions is most important? How should the interventions be accomplished? Performed, requested, administered, communicate, taught, documented. So you're gonna perform that skill or procedure. You're gonna administer that uh, medication. You're gonna protect client, family, and staff. You wanna collaborate with the team. You wanna to delegate to the appropriate person communicate and document and teach that client uh, family or demonstrate professional legal and ethical behavior. So evaluating outcomes really focuses on comparing the outcomes against the expected outcomes. What signs point to improving or declining or unchanged status? Were the interventions effective? What other interventions have been more effective? So that's the clinical judgment measurement process, uh, process in, uh, in a little bit more detail. Now I'm going to show you an example of how you would recognize cues in a scenario. So you have a scenario and depending on the case study and the situation that you're presented within, um, presented, it, you might have four tabs, one that would include health history, nurses notes, um, vital signs, this one has labs, not every scenario will have every tab. Sometimes um, you're going to have just one. And at the, as you get to the end, the sixth, um, the evaluation, you might have more 
you know, so they, it depends on what's happening with this patient where you might have different tabs. So this one is looking at me medical record cues, looking at the health history. So this recognized cue is uh, um, for case study, the one of six, you're going to have six, when you're hitting case studies in the, on NCLEX, you're going to have six um, case uh, st study screens. You're going to have six screens asking six different questions. Here you can see case study screen and looking at the nursing notes tab, you can see time pressure cues if they're pale, diaphoretic, breast sounds uh, are, are an issue, environmental and resource, they're in acute care setting. Vital signs tab shows some time pressure cues, looking at the vital signs, Should I, do I need to intervene quickly? Is there something going on with this patient? Re medical record cues, because you want to look at time, is this and looking at trends on what's going on with the patient. Time pressure, here is a lab. Sometimes you have hemoglobin and hematocrit lab results that are immediate, immediate, immediately contact the physician and get an order for uh, blood. So you really have to make sure that you're understanding what the time pressure cues. The medical record cues, this one has lab results and we'll go into a little bit more detail on the lab results shortly on what you're gonna see on uh, the NGM. Analyze cues. This is case study screen two of six, looking at the different um, factors. So the individual factor, you need to know the knowledge of the medical conditions. What's going on with the patient? Knowing that the medical conditions is this is this correct or not? Is the task com uh, complex? So in a prioritize prioritized hypothesis, you might have an environmental cues of client observation cues that are in the health history, time pressures cues. What would you need to do uh, first in that closed drop down question that you might get? In the generate solutions, this is a case study screen four of six. So this one has individual cues, candidate knowledge of each of those areas, and then environmental cues, what resources are available. So you might, um, might not have something available that can make some changes in the patient. Taking action is case study screen five of six, and it talks about environmental cues. In here, looking at client observation, individual cues, candidate skills. What is your skill? What is your knowledge? And what can you do um, caring for this patient? What, what action would you take? And evaluate outcomes. Looking at the factors here, the environmental cues are the client observations or prior, prior experience in the clinical setting might show what, it, um, what you need to highlight in these NCLEX questions. So that covered the, um, the factors, um, some of the factors that, were, that you can see in that um, level four of the clinical judgment measurement model. Some environment, uh, if you're, you're doing skills in a different area, say you're, you're, you know, you're on the highway and you have to perform a skill, that's a different environment than in a clinical setting where you have everything available. Client observation, if somebody doesn't speak English or if there's other things that are going on that you're really having a hard time, those are factors that could cause um, some concerns and some issues for you. Resources, caring for a client in the mall or church, you don't have the resources. You may not have everything that you need um, to take care of that patient. And then medical record, EHR access. You need to be able to look at that factor. Do you have that information uh, with you, by you, near you to be able to make those decisions that you um, need? Consequences and risks. Discuss what if with the faculty. So we want you to make sure that if you're knowing what's going on with the patient, what if this happens and what if that happens, that conversation with that the faculty will help you understand consequences and risks. And then time pressure. You might be taking care of a patient and somebody walks in the room, has another client that has urgent needs. That's time pressure. What, you, what do you need to do first? Tax complexity. Some, sometimes you need two people, but nobody's available. So that's more complex of a task. And then the cultural considerations. Introduce the variances of caring. So any, there's something that you uh, don't understand about the patient and how to care for the, what, whatever their cultural considerations are. So I wanted to present some hypothetical action models and something that you might see um, as this flows, what factors that are um, might be in there. So in cognitive operations, like recognized cues, you the factors that are considered are the emergency department, is a parent present, all those things that you need to consider. Client observation, you need to know the, is a, what's the client's age, uh, what are the signs and symptoms, um, what is present? What do you see? 
And then the medical record cues, history of diabetes, vital signs, all of that is really important in your cognitive ability to make those and recognize those cues. So then the expected behaviors and actions are, you're recognizing signs and symptoms of dehydration, identify history of diabetes, recognizing abnormal vital signs, um, hypothesize dehydration or diabetes or other things that you might see that's going on with the patient. So this cognitive oper uh, operations looks at analyzing cue, requires knowledge. This is a patient, a pediatric patient. So this requires knowledge of pediatric development. You need to know, have knowledge of dehydration and uh, knowledge of diabetes. So expected to behaviors and actions, you need to describe the relationship between level of blood sugar and dehydration, use evidence to determine client issues. This is covering prioritizing hypothesis and generate solutions. Some back factors you might see, you're giving vital signs, uh, you monitor, monitoring, you need to set pre time pressure to various vital signs. What would you do first? How are you taking care of this client? Generate solution requires knowledge of pediatric development. Generate solution requires the dehydration and treatment, understanding of that, as well as um, interventions. And the expected behavior is prioritizing, prioritizing dehydration, address dehydration, and avoid uh, blood sugar, low blood sugar. So on taking actions and evaluating outcomes, those factors that we're looking for with experience requires experience of administering isotonic fluid, and the best, uh, expected behavior is administering that fluid appropriately. Evaluating outcomes requires that experience of how to administer and um, making sure you understand the cues. What is, is the uh, showing the client awake and are they talking? So that's evaluating the effect of um, your care and reassessing vital signs as part of the expected behaviors. So what you'll see in our in our courses in the courses within nursing is you'll have worksheets. These worksheets might help you understand trends and different things that are going on in courses. You might see gaming one minute papers, quizzes, debate, uh, debates, debriefing, reflective journaling, and muddiest points. Those are the things that we use to evaluate critical thinking. So that's where the determination is made, what we should do within our classes to evaluate that critical thinking um, for you. And we, what, how we evaluate clinical reasoning is questioning our exams, our quizzes, and reflection assignments. How we evaluate clinical judgment, as discussed before, constant map, case studies, clinical judgment case studies, where we're using those, the six, um, six areas of the clinical judgment measurement model. Sometimes it's evolving case studies that just keeps on going through quake cases and asking questions. Examinations and scholarly assignments will help us evaluate clinical judgment. So let's go through the end, uh, next generation item types. Well, on the previous NCLEX exam, they had one or two sentences. They focused on one health problem. They included just relevant client information and they can't go back. The next gen NCLEX test items would have a one to two paragraph client situation. May focus on more than one health problem. It'll include relevant and irrelevant client information, just like, a, like I showed you that client case, that patient chart. Require, it, this requires the use of clinical judgment, of course, the questions you can't go back. So to, the test design, um, NCLEX today, five hours. Um, the scored items are 6130. Um, and you'll have uh, at least three case studies, eight, six questions in each case study. So that's 18 items. Sometimes you might get more because they're doing some practice assessment. There's going to be some uh, clinical judgment. Um, um, there's unscored pretest. The delivery is in um, is in the cat. You might get questions in different type of formats. Select that select that that select all that apply is extended multiple response. Select and they'll give you the number multiple response grouping. They'll have things grouped together. Multiple response uh, like a matrix grid or a multiple choice. Drag and drop like close a rationale a drop down with a close, a rationale or in table. You'll have in, um, highlights in table in, or in text and you'll have a bow, bow tie and I'll show you that shortly. It can claim, contain all type of items um, for trends except the bow tie. Well, here's the sample case study, just so you kind of get an idea of what you're gonna see. The, you'll see the case study screen 
um, it'll say one of six. So that, on that page, you'll have one, one of six, two of six, ask after you answer each question, answer each portion of the case study. It'll have a little introduction. Then it's going to have, like, it could have a history and physical only. It could have nursing notes only, vital signs or lab results. But it'll have a range depending on what that case is that you need to look at. And then on the right side of the page is the question. And that's, you can see in number seven. So you might be here dragging from one side to the other page, the other side of the page. And that's going to help develop and understand your um, help shows your clinical judgment for that uh, beginning uh, for the, you know, identifying the cues, assessing cues. Also, what's new on this NCLEX is you're going to have reference range. And the NCSBN has their own reference range that they use. So they're going to provide you with the reference range on lab results so you can see if they're normal or abnormal. Just note, in clinical settings, the reference range range might be a little different because they might use a different system uh, of testing within their labs. So it might the range might be a little different. We try to follow what reference range um, our agencies use, just so you know that. But that is available. Here's an extended extended drag and drop recognizing cues. So you did, would move um, one side from assessment over to the other side. You just kind of click on it. And I'll show you a little bit uh, a little bit later on uh, in a few minutes just how that scored. So then, because if you were to move them all, you would get scored a plus minus for everything that was right and wrong. Extended drag and drop analyze cues. This is another one where you just pull it from one uh, side to the other. Prioritize hypothesis close. This is like a drop down menu. So you just select here and find uh, find the answer. Um, to that question. Generally, solutions, matrix. If you look at this matrix here, it has circles. You're only going to be able to, in these, on each line, you're only going to be able to select one. When you see a circle, it means you can select only one per each line for each column. So you can't go and select both of them. So this is an extended multiple select, a SATA question. So the old way was not having as many. This can have up to 10 answer choices. So you might be able, you might see a lot of them in here in this question in an ex, uh, extended multiple select data. Highlight, you would go and highlight the areas. You would use your, um, your cursor and you can go, it'll show and you can just highlight that area that you see um, here. This would show you the right answer. So let's look at this case study screen one of six. So this one you can see only has one tab, nurses notes, and you have to draw, uh, drag uh, four client findings to the other side. Now you can see it says drag, uh, drag the top four. So you can select four and move them over. You can't move more than four and you can't, it, it won't be right if you have less than four. And I'll show you how that is scored as well, just so you get an idea about what we look at here. Case study screen two of six, this has only one tab, but you'll see there's squares here. What you're gonna be able to do on this one or you're gonna be responsible for is you could select one or all, any of them that's squared. It's though each column must have at least one but may have more than one because it might the findings might be the more than one area. Case study screen three of six, prioritize hypothesis. This is that drop down. You can see we still only have one tab here. And uh, case study screen uh, three of six is looking at um, the third portion of that clinical judgment measurement model. This one was looking at generating solutions. Again, you can see the circles. You can only have select one in each row, but you can see on the left side, we're still looking at nursing notes, but now it goes from 10 o'clock to noon. Um, so you have additional information that's been added here that you need to look at. So this is looking at a question for generate solutions. Taking action, this is a highlight. Um, area. Again, um, this is uh, case study screen five of six, and you can see the question is a highlight, and you just highlight it in those areas. And then evaluating outcomes. Again, we have three rows, three circles means you can get uh, more information, but you have now two tabs. You'll so that the evaluating outcomes allows you to look at two different areas to see if things are working. Now you have orders to see what orders and what they're taking and what they're doing to make those decisions. So case study recap, 
their real life uh, situations, some information the candidate you won't need in there, but that's real life. That's looking at patients. You're pro going to progress through the time and steps of the national uh, clinical judgment measurement model layer three. So you're going through that area and you're going to have to have that range of knowledge. So there's standalone questions as well. This actually looks at clinical judgment. So there's more information in here um, to provide you with the details on how to make that clinical judgment based on those case studies. This is a bow tie question and using the clinical judgment. So you, um, this uses all areas of the clinical judgment measurement model. So you just select two and pull it up here, select one in the middle and select two on the right-hand side because it's really helping you develop and learn your clinical judgment. So that's why we're really focusing a lot on case studies and understanding what's going on and looking at patient charts. So scoring on NCLEX is a little different. It's got a zero one scoring, a plus minus scoring and a rationale scoring. On the plus minus scoring, you'll see that um, partial credit might be given. So if you have five selected here and it's a plus minus, if you get uh, two correct and one wrong, you're gonna get plus for the two and one is, is wrong. So you get a minus, so you get one point for that. Scoring zero one is if it says which three of the countries are in North America. So you get uh, zero points for the incorrect and you get one for the two, but you can only select th uh, three because it's select N. Rational scoring is if you have the questions like that drop down close, then you'll see um, what statements and how you answer and you will get partial points for that, but not for the, the next one because both of the areas were not correct. So what can you do to develop your clinical judgment? Deep learning is important to promote safe client care. In your class, be active participants. Don't be passive participants. You really need to learn, work on developing, not memorizing. You're not going to be able to memorize your way through the nursing program because that's not how you can care for the patient safely. You need to bring content forward from previous courses and practice, practice, practice. By that, I mean use your ATI, use all of the questions and practice and learn what you did right and learn what you did wrong. Developing clinical judgment comes from active learning. It comes from focusing on, focus learning on applying and analyzing, not memorizing. We want you to focus by think, act, and feeling like a nurse. Developing thinking in action, thinking on action, and thinking about action. So that includes using your reflection, making sure that um, learn the clinical judgment process, examine case studies that you have in your textbook and look for those cues, look for those different things that you can see that help you develop as a nurse. Also identify essential information from the clinical judgment, from the classroom lab and clinical, become familiar with content and bring that content forward to build that knowledge. Use clinical situations to tell your stories or talk about it or doing your reports, your SBAR, using debriefing after your course, in your course, on, by yourself to make sure that you're prepared um, and learning from all of the situation. Spend time on the content that you do not know well. Don't spend time on the content that you're doing real well. Collaborate with others, form groups, take NGN type questions as much as possible. Focus on reviewing the rationales. Look for opportunities to examine client cases. Listen to shift reports, determine what questions you would ask if when you have that opportunity. In the clinical setting, watch how other nurses on the unit work together to develop their clinical judgment to make those decisions. Watch how they interact with, with other professions. Understand that courses build on each other to help you go through the program and move through and develop from simple to complex. So what can you do now? Examine folk, uh, unfolding and single episode case studies, practice using that measurement model, review the resources on the NC, uh, NCSBN, oops, the typo, um, website to learn more about clinical judgment. So we will be sending out some links for you so you can look on the Nash, uh, Next Gen NCLEX website. It talks, has the NCLEX project. It also has clinical judgment measurement model, more about the model. It has other resources for you. It also has sample questions and exam reviews. So you can see, you as students can see the questions and what they're asking, what we're looking for. I thank you so much for coming today. And if there's anything else, let me know what I can do to support you.